other lovely souls are probably going to trickle in, but we're just going to go ahead and get started and they'll join in when they arrive. We've got, okay, I can see everyone except Angel Messenger, which I love that name. Is that the other Roxy? Yes, that would be me. I'm here just dealing with a kiddo first. Awesome. Okay, no worries. Just wanted to make sure you are all good. Welcome, other Roxy. Nice to meet you. <laughs> all right, everyone. Well, welcome to the first workshop of its kind. Wait, someone's not muted. Mute. Okay. Well, <clears throat> Okay, welcome to Recalibrate, my loves. I'm super excited and a little nervous to share this with you just because it's the first kind of workshop of its kind. I've done like physical workshops before that are very much like, let's dive into a certain body part and really get into the nitty gritty of the anatomy and really practice some movement um, and done a lot of physical, live stream yoga classes, but this is the first one that is uh, very centered in the energetics, purely energy, um, emotional, spiritual, creative work. So I'm super excited to share with you all and excited to see a couple of the YDA alumni in here and Mackenzie who just joined the program today. Congrats, girl. And Akila, who might be joining as well. So I'm just so excited to share with you all tonight. I did a really interesting workshop yesterday. And it's funny how it, the theme of the workshop really like lined up with kind of the vibe of this workshop even though I didn't like it wasn't planned you know but it like really correlated with what I was planning on teaching with you guys tonight and it was all about um leadership but doing it in a spiritual really authentic embodied way so really being able to show up online or in your content creation in a way that's like really vulnerable and really emotionally raw and like being able to tap into like a flow state, which is so interesting because I wanted to do this workshop all about like what to do if you just feel stuck in a creative funk, if you just feel like I have no good ideas or just, or your nervous system is just feeling like <sighs> like there's a lot of stress in your body. If you're just generally feeling like there's a lot of stuck, stagnant, heavy, like stressed out energy in your body and in your mind right now and how to like clear that out so you can really feel at home in your body and so that you can tap into creative reservoirs that we all have and that are so important to have full as artists as dancers as creators so anyways it was a really cool workshop definitely cried a lot we did a lot of like inner child work and uh huge emotional releases so maybe we'll have some some fun times with that tonight as well <laughs> so just a little housekeeping before we really dive in to this journey. Um, one, this is going to be recorded so you can go back and watch it, re-listen to it if you felt like you wanted to revisit something or what we were talking about didn't quite click with you yet. So you can re-watch. Um, please save all questions you have till the end of the experience. And with that, I just want to invite you to relax. I got you and I'm here to hold this space for you. You are welcome in whatever energy you are feeling right now, whatever your state of mind, body, soul is, I'm here to hold that space for you. I'm not here to be a fire hose and just like bah, spray you with like <laughs> information and just like overwhelm you. So, you know, don't feel like you have to take notes if you don't want to, or, you know, even if there's certain exercises that we do that just aren't feeling um, like something you wanna do right now, it's okay. Just being 
here in a meditative, relaxed state, just taking it all in, even if some of the themes we talk about don't quite like make sense or you're worried about, oh, am I doing it right? Don't, don't worry about it. You just being here is enough. Um, and just trust that what you need tonight is going to find you, no matter what the outcome is, no matter what emotions you feel, no matter what comes through from your subconscious, it's all good, it's all welcome here. So with that said, let's all just take a deep breath and release, unclench your jaw, let your shoulders drop down, release your belly and your hip flexors, settling into the present moment. And so happy and grateful to be here with you all again. So tonight, exploring our creativity and how to access it and how to drop into a state of more flow, more easily accessible flow, inspiration and wisdom knowingness, not worrying about how is it all going to work out? Oh, what if this isn't good enough? No, just dropping in and feeling centered in your body. So this is a matter of the third eye chakra, which is all about our visioning. What can we see? What can we visualize? What can we what do we want to create? What ideas do we have? What are we how are we seeing the world and our place in it? how we see, and our nervous system. So tonight we're really gonna be exploring the connection between our third eye, one of our biggest creative centers, and the state of our nervous system, which really is the baseline for our entire conscious experience. And I'll get into that a little more in just a bit. So tonight, focusing on the third eye and the nervous system and really clearing them and centering them and grounding them to allow for more ease and flow and grounding in our life, which will ultimately lead to more inspiration, more confidence and more peace. So let me ask you all this, who has had an experience where all of a sudden an idea just, you just are hit with it out of nowhere. You're like, oh my God, I wanna make a dance with this. I'm gonna write a poem. I know what to paint. Like something just, all of a sudden you're just like, oh my God, I have such a good idea. Like I'm gonna make, and then you make it happen and it feels good. Like raise your hand if you've had that. You're like, oh my God, like I feel so inspired. Yeah, it feels so good, right? You just know what to do. It's so clear in your mind, you're like, and even if it's not like exactly clear, you just like drop in to the experience. Mostly I'm talking about like, cause most of us are dancers here. Like you just go into the flow, you find the perfect song, something, you, if some emotion comes up, you're like, oh, I'm just gonna move this out and like express myself. It feels so good, right? That flow state. We're not, we're not overthinking it. We're just going for it. So on the other hand, I want to ask you who has had an experience where let's say you get into the studio, you're like, I got to create a dance, you know, I got an improv homework assignment or something like <laughs> for those of us who've done a, mod a dance BFA um, and it just your mind goes blank. No ideas come. <laughs> All of a sudden you can't remember a single dance move that you've ever learned. Like <laughs> you're just like nothing and you're trying it feels really forced it feels really lackluster and un uninspired and you just you can't drop in and you're just like uh, like I want to make something or I have to or I have to like write a post I have to make a video I have to anything anything that requires like creative ideas and it's just like I got nothing mind goes blank it's not a fun feeling. Then you start to overthink. You start to be like, oh my God, like what's wrong with me? Am I not creative? Am I not smart enough? Do I not have cool enough ideas? Like spiral, it can lead to that sometimes. Or sometimes you are, you might just feel like you don't even have the drive to be creative. Like it's not even that you want to and you can't, it's just like, it's not there that spark of like, I want to express through my art isn't there. Sometimes you feel like you're just trying to survive. 
you only have enough energy just to get by on what you're doing. Okay, wait, I'm gonna let Cassidy in real quick. And it's just, have you felt that as well? We were like, I just feel really drained. I feel burnt out. Everything in life just feels like too, too much right now. I can't even think about like being creative or expressing myself. We all felt that before. And it feels really heavy. It feels really like stagnant, right? When we've lost our sense of flow. And most times when we're in that state, it's because we're living too much in our mind. We kind of start to disconnect from the body a little bit. I'm just gonna one second check in. Hey, Cassidy, welcome, babe. Thank you for joining. So yes, we've all experienced that full spectrum of the creative flow from totally inspired, grounded, stoked to I'm too tired to even care. Like I just feel ugh, stressed out, burnt out, adrenal fatigue, emotional fatigue. And then maybe you see other creators online, right? With social media, everyone's posting videos all the time. One second. Okay, cool, Cassidy, you are all good. Um, you know, and then you might think to yourself like, oh my God, how do they just have so many ideas all the time and everything they make looks amazing. And like, they just seem so much more creatively gifted than I will ever be. Like, how do they do it? And then you feel even more down on yourself and the comparison hits and then you get even more in your head and out of your body, out of your heart. Have we all experienced that to some level? Comparison really stopping you from being in your flow. So that's what we're here to be able to navigate out of that stuck, stagnant place. Because we're all creative beings and we all have the exact same capacity and ability to access that creative flow that we see other people doing online. We're like, I'm, how do they do that? I want some of that. They just seem so confident in all their ideas all the time. You have that same capability available to you because you also have a nervous system and you also have a third eye center. You just need to get them balanced and recentered. So creativity and great art. Think about a time when you saw either a dance piece or you heard a song or saw anything creative and it just like, ugh, got you right in the feels. Everyone can think of something. And it's, it was great because it made us feel something and it, it tuned us into a part of our own hearts and a part of our, our own soul. It touched us to, you know, sometimes the greatest art was never like the most technical dancing you've ever seen, but it was the emotion behind it. it wasn't the best you know, maybe not the best singer you've ever heard, but like the emotion behind it was so, it just touched you. And so creativity really happens when we're tuned into our emotions, to our emotions, because emotions are really just energy in motion, energy in flow. So when you are in flow state, you are feeling your emotions. And the best way to feel your emotions is to feel them in your body, to be in your body and out of your head. So one of the biggest creative energy blocks, if our creativity is really tied into our energy in motion and how we feel it in our body, one of the biggest blocks of that creative energy keeping you from flow state. And when I say flow state, I really, to me, it feels like this state of like lucid embodiment, like really here and now, like behind your eyeballs, like fully vibrantly present and like, oh, you know, it just, the emotion, like you can't even contain it and it comes out through your dance and you create this amazing art through your body. Um, this unimpinged energy manifesting into some kind of physical expression. 
And the biggest block of that state is when we have unprocessed emotions in our body, when we have kind of a traffic jam of sorts, a traffic jam of energy in our body, maybe unprocessed trauma emotions that we've stored in our body, in our fascia, in our nervous system, or in your mind and your third eye. If you have a lot of just scattered, cluttered, jammed up thoughts, you have a lot going on in your life, you're just really overstimulated with phones, jobs, school, people, family. I mean, there's so much. We live in a very stimulating modern world. So when we have this constant state of stimulation of always taking things in, without taking time to decompress and have equal amount of time of releasing things out, that's when these, the stress and this energy gets stuck and it accumulates in our body. And you all know what this feels like when you just feel so overwhelmed, you can't even think straight. So much is on your plate, to-do list, You've been scrolling on Instagram, avoiding your feelings, you know, intent, just <laughs> visualize. Yeah, <laughs> okay, was like, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's just overwhelming and you can't think clearly in that state, right? You just can't, nothing good can come through. Your higher wisdom can't come through. You need to think about your energy as like, physical stuff in your body. If it's just crammed in there and you're just, it can't flow out, there's no room for anything new or good to flow in, right? So when we feel are feeling really crammed and blocked in our energy, we've just got a lot going on and we're living in the mind, we're not dropping into our body. What our nervous system does, what our fascia, fascia does, and we talk about this a lot in Yoga for Dance Academy. So if this isn't quite making sense at the moment, just bear with me. When we constantly are in a state of stress, even if it's really minute and subtle, and we've kind of just gotten used to always feeling a little bit low key, like on edge or anxious or just like overwhelmed, that shows up in our nervous system. And our nervous system our autonomic nervous system, the part of us that controls all the things in our body that we don't have to think about, controls our digestive system, our heart beating, our temperature regulation, the release of hormones, our endocrine system, all of the things that your body does on a daily basis that you don't, you don't have to think about like, all right, heart, let's beat, let's keep, let's beat again, you know, like it's all the things that just your body is doing. But there are two states that it can be in. One is a sympathetic nervous system state. When we're in the sympathetic nervous system state, we are in fight or flight mode. We are tense. We're not breathing as deeply. Our digestive system is shut off. Blood is flowing to our muscles. We're in fight or flight. We're ready to like run away from a bear, right? It's like a very survival mode activated state and that gets activated when we're under stress. And then we have our parasympathetic state, which is rest, digest, relax, grounding, chill, but like recovering. That's the state where like, you know, you, you go in when you hit a real nice Shavasana, you're just like blissed out and relaxed and your body can start, you know, doing the muscle recovery, your digestive system gets back on track. That is the state where flow and creative ideas and processing our emotions in a healthy way and maybe even transmuting them into some kind of expressive art happens. But what happens, unfortunately, and this is chronically across the entire planet right now, is that people are in a state of the sympathetic all the time. We're always stressed out. We're always overstimulated. We're always like have so many thoughts going on and we don't take enough time to chill and intentionally relax 
when I say intentionally relax, I don't mean sitting on the couch watching Netflix while you also scroll through reels on Instagram, you know, and I don't say that judgmentally, I'm guilty of that, but like <laughs> that is not truly giving your body a chance to like <sighs> clear out that emotional energy, all the thoughts and just like decompress. Is everyone still following with me to some degree? States of the nervous system, how it's intertwined with our emotions and okay, beautiful. You guys are awesome. This is a, this is a lot. So just breathe and let it sink in. So when we're in a state of stress, even if it's really subtly and we're always just a little tense, not many ideas can come through. And when we're in that state, a lot of times what tends to happen, we're feeling fight or flight. You have to think about it on a primal survival instinct level. For a lot of us, if we don't feel safe in our body, even if it's just because someone at work was a bitch or like you're late on a homework assignment or like you're, you're not feeling great about your body someday, like even if it's not a literal bear attack, <laughs> Your body still senses that as a threat, as danger. And sometimes it feels safer to escape to our mind, to the realm of thoughts, than to be here in our body, feeling it. So a lot of times is we are chronically stressed and chronically cut off from our body. And this can happen in dancers too, even though we spend a lot of time moving our body we can still be disconnected from how it really feels, how our emotions are traveling in the body, how our breath is traveling in the body, what is actually being held in the body. So when we want to change our baseline state of consciousness, whether we are in a relaxed, open-hearted, open-minded, that parasympathetic state where we can be present and grounded, we're not, we're not stressed out, or whether we are in a just low-key irritable, stressed out, like can't think state, these two very different states of consciousness really depend on how our nervous system is doing and how our body is doing. So when we can change our baseline state of consciousness. Imagine if you could on your daily, everyday life, start to transition from always being low key, kind of stressed, tense, agitated to always feeling really grounded and really like, even in the midst of challenge, be able to like, hmm, take a deep breath, meet the moment where it's at and allow, you know, creative problem solving to come through. Um, when we're in that state, we can really meet the moment where it's at and we can be more present and adaptable and ideas come through so much easier. So that's what we're ultimately trying to reach is to change how our baseline state of consciousness is on a daily basis from, I'm stressed, life is intense, I'm overstimulated to like, I'm spending time grounding in, checking with my body, clearing out and making sure my mind isn't cluttered doing things like yoga, meditation, journaling, walking outside, nature, so many ways to do that. Um, but the, pr the problem with trying to access more creativity or trying to feel better in our body, we're like, oh yeah, that sounds great. I wanna feel that way, of course. The problem is that we try to think our way there. We're like, let me use the mind. I'm just gonna think about it enough instead of doing something about it. We think, when the mind is running the show, which a lot of us can ex know what that feels like, when the, your mind is just like, blah, 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 like you're cut off from your body, when your mind is running the show and it is in charge and you are really identifying with your thoughts and stuck in the, the monkey mind vortex clusterfuck that is our mind sometimes, when it's running the show, it'll convince us to not do the things that make us feel good and in our body and grounded, right? Um, I'll go first and admit, be the first to admit that there have been plenty of times where I have thought, I know I should do some yoga right now. I know I should like take five minutes and like breathe and meditate or like should take a moment and like take a step back. But then I don't, 
your mind is just like, no, 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 we don't have time for that. Like, no, we can just think ourselves better. We're just going to like think our way out of it. I'm, I raise your hand. I'm like, please, I cannot be the only one who's <laughs> been guilty. Yeah. <laughs> when the mind is running the show, it wants to keep running the show. It's like, why would I be down to like drop into our body and like feel what we're actually feeling? Like, uh, uh, I don't want to actually confront what I'm feeling. Like, no, nah, we're just going to stay up here and just like logic our way into creativeness or problem solving. So <laughs> the mind tries to take over sometimes, but when what we really need is to let the mind take a little backseat, be like, all right, buddy, I, I know you, you want to be in control, but sit on down. I'm going to let my soul and my heart lead here. And that can be really scary sometimes because it's, it's a little bit of unknown. It can feel more vulnerable, but we need to, hold on, let me gather my thoughts here for a moment. So the mind will try and convince us, you don't need to, feel, you don't need to be embodied. You don't need to take a moment. No, we need to make this now. Cause if you don't make this dance, you're not creative enough. You're not good enough. You're not, you know, whatever. It'll just be like, no, ah, let's distraction. Other thoughts take us away from breathing and being in our body. But you can't make good art that way because you don't feel good doing that. And it's pretty simple, you guys. When you don't feel good, when you feel shitty, you produce shitty work. <laughs> like you just, nothing good can come when you're feeling shitty. And now let me really offer some discernment here. Feeling shitty and feeling like sad or down can create really good art, really emotional, potent, powerful art but only if we allow ourselves to actually feel it and not just think about it. So I want to invite you to really allow yourself to feel instead of trying to process and think your way through your experience and your emotional experience. So if you are feeling creatively stuck, something led you to this workshop for a reason, your nervous system needed a, a reset. You've been not having so much flow state. You need new ideas. Something led you here to be here in this space right now. And if you feel creatively stuck or you're feeling stagnant or just weighed down, just like ugh, stressed out, burnt out in any kind of way, it's because you have some stuck emotional energy in you blocking that flow. And conversely, on the other end of that, maybe you have tons of ideas swimming around your head and your third eye is just like, brah, brah, brah. like you can't, like it's almost annoying <laughs> how many like ideas you have, but you don't even like have time to like manifest them. Or maybe you just don't even let them come through to full development because you start judging yourself, second guessing yourself. You're like, no, it's not a good idea. That would look dumb. No one wants to see that or hear that, whatever. Like, Either way, in both of those situations, the solution is embodiment. The solution in both of those situations, whether you're feeling too blocked to even like access any creativity or you're just, your ideas are too jumbled that they can't come through and actually manifest. Both of those require you to spend some time getting out of your head and into your body. So with all of this in mind, with the understanding that the nervous system, the state of our nervous system really determines whether we can be in our body and feel safe and grounded and relaxed to like feel our emotional experience and let that be transmuted into expressing ourselves or if we're just really stressed, disconnected from our body, living in our head. With that information in mind, tonight's focus and purpose is to get you grounded, to get you embodied and get you into a parasympathetic state. Release that stress, clean slate, <sighs> let it go. To release tension, release stuck emotional energy and that my friends, is what will set the stage 
for your third eye to go off in a positive way and for creative downloads, those spontaneous creative ideas or knowingness and wisdom to come through you more regularly, like on the daily. <laughs> And I really wanted to share this practice with you all tonight, because I think this is a really important part of being a dancer, being an artist that doesn't get talked about enough. We're so focused on learning so much, taking in new information, right? Doing, 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 doing all the time. We're all so busy. And there's not enough emphasis put on the the processing of our experience, of the reflecting, of the releasing, and really sorting out our experience and staying connected with who we are, and then feeling safe enough in that to let that come through, through our dancing, through our artwork, and just through how we interact with people, whether we feel safe to be ourselves, and comfortable to be ourselves because we've met ourselves and we've been able to feel our emotions um, or if we feel like we need to hide ourselves and keep suppressing who we are suppressing our emotions so let's get heart centered let's get in the here and now and let's find some flow state so the inspiration can strike spontaneously on the daily whenever you need it if you can get yourself into a parasympathetic state, if you know that practice of how to change the baseline of your consciousness, you're going to be unstoppable. The, the ideas, the creativity, the answers will just start to come spontaneously. You won't even have to think them into being. They will just come through. Your intuition can begin to shine. Hmm, okay. Is everyone feeling on some level good with what we're what we're diving into and why we're doing it? Beautiful. All right, friends. So the first thing we're gonna do to start the process of decluttering the mind, decluttering the third eye, so that we have more space for the things that we need to come through is we're going to do some stream of conscious journaling. So I want you all to grab your journals. This is such a good practice to just clear, to just get through that first layer of bullshit in our mind, that first surface layer of just like, oh yeah, I have to put the laundry in later. Okay, wait, I need to also like get that to make dinner tonight. Oh wait, wait what's that smell? Oh, did I text that person back? Like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, Tori. <laughs> Uh, so we need to get break through that layer of just like nonsense before we can really dig in deep. So we're going to just keep your pen to your paper the entire time. Don't overthink it at all. Just write. It can literally be nonsense of like, I don't know what to write. Oh, this is weird. Oh, my arm itches. Like it doesn't have to be good at all. No judgment. Just all the thoughts that are on the surface of your mind, just let them pour through. Don't overthink it. Don't judge it. Sound good, everyone? Beautiful. All right. Go ahead and begin. We are just going to... Saturn, hi. Connected to iPhone.
Friends, finish up your last thought, your last sentence, and then take a deep breath. Let it go. Set your journal aside. Don't even worry. Never read it again. <laughs> Out of your mind forever. <laughs> mm, so that is <laughs> you feeling good, Tommy. Tommy has joined us tonight and he is. Already, the nervous system is chilling. <laughs> mm, so my friends, I would love to just open up the circle as we move into the practice we're gonna do to give everyone an, an opportunity to share if you want. What is it that you want to release or what do you want to find more space for to flow? Is there some creative project in your life that you want to open up more space for? Is there something you need to let go of? Is there an emotion that you feel is stuck? What came up for you in that writing? Anything interesting that you weren't expecting? Um, just to share with everyone like where you're at and how you're doing. Open up the community a little bit. Is everyone all right with that? I really like to, to share. Yes, beautiful. Let's have one of our um, YDA alumni go first. You guys know the drill. Turia, you know what's up, girl. Do you want to take a moment to share? What's up, y'all? Um, so, in my journaling process, I <laughs> was reminded that I was hired to choreograph of like a music video essentially. Um, and he already like gave me a down payment and I just like keep procrastinating and I'm like, I need to do that. <laughs> so um, that came up and it was like definitely floating around in my mind along with all the other things that I have to do. Like, oh yeah, text this person, email that person. Um, <laughs> and then Roxy, when you're like, just write it down on the paper. I felt, I felt so much better because now I have a list of things I need to do and I can go and check them off and I can <laughs> remember to choreograph the thing. So that, yeah, I mean, really just giving myself a chance to breathe because I'm like, I know I'm going to forget this stuff. Like, I'm just going to keep thinking about it. So I don't, I should just write it down. <laughs> so. yeah. That's exciting though. Yes. Perfect. Well, this will give that choreography a little boost for you. But yeah, I feel you on that. Just like getting it out of my head and be like, hey, it's written down. So I know I'm not going to forget, like brings such a, a relief. <laughs> it's so real. Well, thank you for being here tonight, babe. I'm so happy to see you. Happy to be back. Yes, Akila, how are you, love? What is coming up for you? Um, well, similarly, uh, half my stream of consciousness ended up in Portuguese uh, because I have some Portuguese homework to do that I'm procrastinating. <laughs> Um, but something that's been coming up a lot for me, it's not necessarily that I'm having creative blocks. I'm actually kind of feeling quite creative, um, but getting a little bit kind of concerned when I kind of see originality starting to die a little bit on social media and like with the 
I think with the introduction of TikTok, like it's kind of a scary time for artists between the pandemic and the rise of TikTok because it seems like everywhere you look, the people that are doing the same things are getting so much attention and so much praise. And it's, I've been asking myself the question, like what's going to happen to artists who are original and authentic and creative? Like, are we gonna lose a place for that? And so there's this like rising anxiety that I have that for the first time I, I am feeling creative and I'm feeling um, those expressions come up and starting to feel confident in my artistic voice essentially. And it's like, is there gonna be a place for that when this whole pandemic is over and like, it's just terrifying to me. And then I'm having all this anxiety surrounding that, so. Mm. <laughs> I'm proud of you for acknowledging that and being real with yourself about how you're feeling. Definitely a valid thing, especially for, me, for all artists coming out of this pandemic and trying to still create space for them to express authentically. And to that, I would say, to ask yourself, is that, or how much of that anxiety that you're feeling around, will there be a space for me to offer my work? I would ask yourself, how much of that anxiety is maybe just your own self-doubt, perhaps, that is being masked in what if, you know, no one wants this? What if it's not good enough? What if there's not a space for that? You know, that's something that I think all dancers struggle with on some level, wondering if like, oh, is what I'm gonna create gonna be good enough? Will anyone like it? Will it be like validated and appreciated? And it will. I'm super excited to hear that you're in like a creative space. That's super exciting. And I, I hope after this, you feel even more like boosted in that to create anyways, even if you don't know where it will go yet or who will see it, um, but to create even if it's just for yourself and to keep that joyful spark alive in you and lead with example. If you're worried that the dance world and just dance is losing its um, originality and yeah people just want to see the same like TikTok dances over and over again like lead by example show people how amazing original heartfelt emotional true raw art can be yeah definitely glad you are here though thank you for sharing good to be here mm -hmm. wow. Mackenzie, how are you, darling? Um, I'm good. Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, journaling, for some reason, always brings up anxiety for me, which I think is kind of the opposite point <laughs> of journaling, probably, but it, it stirs up. So I'm kind of dealing with that right now and trying to process that. It, it brings up... Um, I don't know, I feel like I'm kind of uh, mean towards myself when I journal, because when the stream of consciousness comes, it's everything that's picking apart. And I'm um, working a lot with um, self-love and um, self-doubt and, and shame and all of that. And so it kind of is like word vomit all over <laughs> the paper and that um i realized though as i was uh doing it that i was being mean to myself and i kind of like snapped out of it and was like no let's use this time to try and be more positive and um mm -hmm. that i don't know I, I feel like i'm processing a lot i i don't know if that really answers the question at all but I feel I mean, like that's all. for you all to express what's on your mind because that is just part of the process too is like if you don't express you what you don't express you suppress so this is your space all you guys yeah say what's on your mind what's making you anxious what is like bothering you just get it out 
Totally. It, you know, journaling can definitely bring up so many things and we can put a pressure on ourselves sometimes of like, all right, it's time to journal, time to have like a, an aha moment or like an awakening through writing. But like sometimes it, it is just word vomit. And then the benefit is just that you've got it out of your brain <laughs> and noticed what your own thought patterns are. You, and that's amazing that you could notice like, oh, I'm being kind of mean to myself right now. Like, I'm gonna switch that. Like that is still a huge win, even if it did bring up some anxiety. And now you can breathe through it and let it go. And that's what this whole workshop is to just like, whoo, bring up the things that are suppressed and like breathe through them, feel them, let them go. So. And it is, even though it is scary and it's an anxious thing, I think I do very much live in my head. So I, I like what you said about it's bringing that down and being grounded in your body. And I think that's what scares me about it is because then I feel it leave my head into my body and the anxiety or the, the fear, whatever it is manifests in your body. And it's like, wait, I don't like this. Go back up in the head. <laughs> but yeah. So. The mind is like, God, what is that? Oh, what is that? Oh my God, I'm feeling like that. It's like, oh God, no, take me back. Yes, so uh, sending you bravery and strength for all of you to be able to sit and breathe through the uncomfortable, scary emotions. That is some serious strength right there. Well, thank you for sharing, love, and thank you for being here. And Cassidy, are you available to share and speak right now? I know you were saying you're in public, but if you um, are available to share, I would love to hear from you. She might be putting something in the chat. Sorry, I cannot. Okay, no worries. Well, thank you for being here. Anyways, um, let's go to Roxy, other Roxy. What's up, girl? How are you? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's been a weekend. Um, journaling definitely brought up a lot because I've been doing um, like therapy sessions more often mm -hmm. and we've been working through healing like a lot of trauma, but it's been seriously affecting my, like my nervous system to where I almost can't even paint as much as I used to and like it's hard having you know blank canvases just sitting there staring at you like you know paint me and I'm just like oh my god but what am I supposed to paint you know mm. yeah definitely you know that feeling for sure and I'm super proud of you for going through therapy I'm in therapy right now too and yeah it is a lot to to process for sure so I hope within this workshop just even if it's just bit by bit like mm, giving you some more time and space to process and you're a mom too so like I'm super proud of you for taking that space for yourself as well it's it's amazing and I would maybe invite you to maybe even after this workshop or another time if there's space to not put any expectation on what to paint like destroy a whole canvas if you need to just like messy paint slash a hole in it throw glitter at it like just <laughs> ah, get your <laughs> get your feelings out and take let go of any attachment of what it needs to be or should look like and almost as like a stream of consciousness paint session just like word vomit but like paint vomit on canvas <laughs> <laughs> That is definitely very therapeutic, but <laughs> thank you for being here. So good to meet you too. Welcome to the, to the tribe. Yeah, I'm really happy that I could make it. Glad you're here. Last but not least, Georgie. Hey, babe. Wow. Um, okay, I'm usually a word vomiter. I always dominate conversations, so I've been really intentional on how I speak. So, hmm, through the writing, I discovered, so last month I had a very successful and busy month work-wise in my acting life. Mm -hmm. And this May, there's kind of been a lull, but I do have some dance opportunities that obviously don't bring any money in. 
but I realized I was limiting myself just because I was placing such significance on money. But there was a lot of opportunity and network in the dance, even if it's a free opportunity. So I'm giving myself this space to not put myself to that standard so I can experience um, dancing with these um, women and enjoying it and seeking the abundance in that, even though I'm not making money off of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I had that realization because I'm sure if I kept that expectation, I would have limited so many opportunities. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that trying to find, yeah, that can be a tricky thing for sure. Like wanting to honor your time and energy, but wanting to not limit yourself at the same time. I feel like, and this is something that, that Tommy does a lot too, because he gets a lot of, you know, people asking him to do gigs all the time and learning to discern, like, what do I actually, like, we always joke about this Venn diagram in his head of like, what's worth the time and energy for all these people, like asking him to like make songs or do gigs or, you know, stuff. And we're always like, hey, does it, there's like three scales, like, does it, how much joy and like stokage does it bring you? Are you like really excited to do it? How much does it pay you? And what was the last one? Um, networking. Like who oh yeah. Know? And does it offer networking like opportunities to connect and like always comparing like where on the Venn diagram does this lie? <laughs> and is it worth it? Some... Needs to check two it needs to check at least two of the things <laughs> to feel worth it. <laughs> because so, like I've yeah. been trying to feed off my intuition but sometimes that gets a little blurry yeah the Venn diagram networking connections joy payment has to at least two <laughs> Tommy yes and speaking of Tommy do you want to do you want to share babe what's coming up and you can come um, over here too if you want I guess I could share sure hold down the, the masculine energy Tom Tom hello people um, I basically just definitely had a serious amount of word vomit <laughs> happen. Um, I was at first just really focusing on the music that you were playing and I was trying to force myself not to just like write about the music that I was <laughs> Such hearing a come out of the <laughs> speaker. And so instead I was trying to just kind of like, okay, try and not focus on that and tune into my my feelings and my thoughts and just really I think I had a lot of gratitude come out for like stuff that's coming up in the future like the, mm. the wedding and shows and um, other opportunities and stuff and trying to acknowledge um, acknowledge that but also recognizing that there is obviously a little bit of anxiety about how much stuff is coming up and just um, trying to encourage a balance within myself of just appreciating that anticipation as opposed to like turning it into anxiety and like mm -hmm. oh there's like so much coming up trying to kind of approach that from more of a place of like this so much is that I get to do exactly than I have and to yeah do. <laughs> and anticipation is like a really cool feeling to try and um grasp you know mm. so yeah that's kind of yeah. That's where I was at. Thanks, babe. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I too wrote feeling wrote about feeling very grateful to have all of you here and grateful that I'm feeling much better. Last night I had a lot of emotional releasing from that workshop. So mm, gratitude as well. Thank you everyone for sharing. Go ahead and put your journal away and get situated to do some lovely breath work and some EFT. So we're gonna be releasing a lot of emotional energy. It's gonna be really lovely, could possibly be intense, could make you feel very vulnerable, could make you feel really relaxed. And I just want to in invite you as we move into this to just be open to whatever your experience is and trust that the magic of what we're about to do is serving you. And it's giving, gonna give you what you need, even if it's not what you want. 
um, and to just trust the process and to enter into this with curiosity. So go ahead and close your eyes, just letting your hands rest wherever is comfortable, maybe on your knees, in your lap. And just scanning into your body from your toes, through your knees, your hips, your stomach, your ribs, your arms, your neck, your head, and just do a big old unclench of everything. Feeling the support of the earth below you and whatever you're sitting on, holding your body, feeling the support of this group and this community you are supported. We are going to align our energy with the energy of the earth to create greater resonance with how your emotional state of being connects you to nature's vibration. Keeping your eyes closed. Take a deep breath from your feet all the way to the top of your head. Breathe into your head, into your brain and hold it and release. Taking a deep breath into your feet and hold it. Release. Take a deep breath into your pelvis, into your hips, and hold it. Release. Take a deep breath, filling your entire lung capacity, and hold it. And release. Take a deep breath into your heart and hold it. Release. Take a deep breath into your hands and hold it. Release. Take a deep breath while thinking the thought, I am aligning with the earth's heartbeat and hold. And release. Breathing into your head and hold it and release. Take a deep breath into your feet and hold it. Release. Take a deep breath into your pelvis and hold it. Release. Take a deep breath into your lungs. Release. Take a deep breath into your heart and hold it. Release. Take a deep breath into your hands.
and release. Take a deep breath and repeating, I am aligning with the earth's heartbeat and hold that breath. And release. Letting your breath drop into the lowest part of your rib cage, into your belly. Letting your belly and your ribs expand as you inhale. And gently def deflate as you exhale. And continue to breathe in this way, letting your breath drop down into your diaphragm. Even if it feels uncomfortable to allow yourself to take up that space, breathe through whatever thoughts, whatever feelings are arising. And when the mind starts to wander, as it naturally will, gently return your awareness to your breath and how it feels in your body. Relax your brow, relax your jaw, relax your eyes, relax your ears. Maybe even let your mouth slightly open and really let your jaw, let your tongue relax. Keeping your eyes closed, give your toes and your fingers a gentle wiggle, feeling into your body. And gently fluttering your eyelids open, staying in this quiet, observant state. I'm going to move into some EFT, which is tapping different acupressure points in your body to help release the flow of energy along certain meridians and energy channels in your body. So make sure you're all on mute. So all you're going to do is just follow along with me. Don't worry about if you're doing the right side. Um, I'm just gonna lead you through several different points of tapping while we repeat some affirmations and what we're doing here is we're rewiring our emotional energy pathways and our emotional thought patterns in our brain to allow for more emotional acceptance and love and honor for ourselves. So the places we'll be moving through is tapping this outside of the hand, tapping the top of the head, the inner corner of your eyebrow and then your temple, your cheeks, the top of your lip, your chin, right below your collarbones, so kind of right in that little bottom of your neck area, and then the side of your ribs. So that'll be the flow, okay? Hand, head, inner, outer cheek, lip, 
chin, collarbone, ribs, okay? But don't worry, I'm gonna lead you through it. Just follow along. And I want you to out loud, if you are comfortable and you're in a space that you feel comfortable doing that, repeat it or just repeat it in your head. So this is to release blocked energy stopping us from fully diving into our creative projects to release that energy stopping us. Let's begin tapping, just lightly tapping. Even though I hesitate, I love and accept myself. Even though I feel inconsistent with how I show up right now, I choose to love and accept myself. Even though I am the only one stopping myself from flowing, I choose to love and honor myself. Sometimes I hesitate. Sometimes I think twice. I stop and then I start and then I stop again. I have a hard time staying in flow. I wish I could feel more confident and clear, but I keep having resistance. I keep having to deal with agitation and friction. All this friction, it stops me, it slows me down. It stops the creativity from flowing out of me. Why would I stop myself? What am I afraid of? If I surfed through life effortlessly, moving from one achievement to the next, I might feel like success is too easy. Maybe that scares me and makes me want to pause. It's good for me to become aware of the fear that is causing friction. Ejecting all of the fear and blockages. Preventing me from entering flow state at will. While creating my art out of my brain and nervous system now. Ejecting all fear blockages that are preventing me from entering flow. Now I can choose differently. Now I choose to experience greater flow. I choose to experience greater affluence. I choose to experience feeling in alignment with my true self. I'm allowing myself to focus and commit. I'm allowing myself to move forward. easily to finish what I'm doing and move on to something else. And sometimes that something else might only be for fun. It's not all about money and work. 
but I choose to focus on what I'm working on. I choose to flow from one activity to the next. I choose to make art through my authentic highest self. I align my body, mind, and spirit and create content from the heart. I align my mind, body, and spirit and create content from my heart. And so it is, and so it is. Just letting your hands shake off. Bringing your hands together, begin to rub them, creating warmth, creating heat, breathing deep, staying present. And as if you're holding holy water in your hands, scoop it up and bring it to the top of your head, pressing down. And keeping that press going, moving forwards to your face, pressing on the forehead and down the face, like you're giving your face a massage. Down your cheeks, bottom of your chin down your throat and your neck, making your way to your heart space. And when you arrive at the heart, just doing three circles, sending yourself some love. And then again, holy water, cleansing to the top of your head and pressing down the back of your head now. Let it feel good. Give yourself a little massage, getting behind your ears, in the back of your neck, releasing tension, making your way back to your heart. And circling. Starting with your left hand at the top of your hand, squeezing your way up. Really feel tension leaving your body. Sending your body love, releasing any tension being held in your fascia and your nervous system. Up to the top of your shoulder, a little squeezius, trapezius. And back to the heart. Now taking that same arm, the underside, starting at the bottom of the hand. Just working your way up. Really taking a moment to look at your body, acknowledge your physical vessel. Making your way up the arm and across the collarbone, back to the heart. Same thing, other side, taking the top of your hand, the top of your fingers, working your way up. Let it feel good. And to the top, the shoulder there, across the collarbone, just pressing in, turning into the heart. Mm. Yeah, and taking the underneath, squeezing your way up. Mm. And making your way up that arm, getting kind of underneath armpit area, get to the top of the collarbone and to the heart. Mm. Starting from the bottom of the torso at our pubic bone and just gently pressing in and working your way up. Maybe getting 
under your ribs a little bit if that feels comfy. Just working your way up, just pressing, like really feel your body. Send your stomach some love and make your way up to the heart. Breathe deep. And same thing, the back of the torso starting at the very low back and just yourself a little gentle back rub here. Just going up as high as you can before letting your arms come to the sides of your ribs and back to the heart. Taking your left leg, reaching for those toes and give them a squeeze here. Getting into the sole of the foot and the top of the foot, to your ankle, and just you know what to do. Make your way back to the heart, back to your center. Giving your body love along the way. Relaxing all your leg muscles, your hip flexors, your booty. Making your way. Notice if you're holding tension anywhere and invite your body to release it in your next exhale. And then take that other leg when you're ready. Nice, full, relaxing breaths. Taking your time. Arriving at the heart in your own time. And then open your arms up. Exhale, wrap yourself in a hug. Let your chin drop to your chest. Taking some breaths, holding yourself in love. Saying to your body, thank you, I love you. Saying to your heart, thank you, I love you. Saying to your soul, thank you, I love you. And saying to your mind, thank you, I love you. Let your arms release and go ahead and make your way onto your back lying down. Hugging your knees into your chest. And just giving yourself a gentle rock side to side here, massaging out your low back. And then hugging your right knee in, let your left leg extend out. Give that right leg a gentle rock, really releasing your hip flexors, release that femur bone in your socket, your hip socket. And then let that knee drop into your right elbow, getting some openness to those hips and reach the left arm up overhead, finding length in the left side of your body. And openness through the hips, keeping both hips grounded. Returning back to that breath in your belly, noticing how does your breath feel in this position? How does your body feel? Exhale, let that leg cross over the midline, coming into a gentle twist here. I'm going to practice bumblebee breath, which is one of the most soothing 
breaths for the whole nervous system and activates the throat chakra. So what you're gonna do is with your right arm, reach over to that left. So you're gonna be like this, you can inhale. You can just watch me, I'll demonstrate. You're going to hum, making a kind of buzzing sound going on your exhale. Opening up to the twist. Inhale, cross. Exhale, just jump in when you're ready. Letting those vibrations move through your body. Try not to judge yourself. that left hand. You're going to trace a big circle up overhead, lengthening as you inhale. Exhale, open it into the twist. And again, circling that arm, reaching forwards. Up overhead, lengthening up out of your pelvis. Exhale, twist. Sinking up the breath with the movement. Now reaching that arm across. And we're just going to continue to turn until we come onto our belly with our right leg up in a little kind of half frog pose here. And you're just making a little pillow for yourself with your hands resting down. Now this is a being pose, not a doing pose. So. Just focus on relaxing. See if you can send your breath into your low back, and into the back of the body, accessing the lung capacity in the back of your torso. Imagining and visualizing all of the muscles and connective tissue and fascia surrounding that right hip, releasing and softening with every exhale. On your next inhale, affirming to yourself, I am aligning with the earth's heartbeat. Allow yourself to melt to the floor, find total ease and relaxation allowing yourself to sink into that parasympathetic rest and digest state of your nervous system. Now straightening that right leg, let it meet your left leg behind you, bringing your arms next to your, your hands next to your ribs and pressing up into a gentle cobra. Keeping those shoulders down and the neck long. Exhale, pressing up and back to a child's pose. Sending your breath down the entire length of your spine from the top of your head down to your tailbone.
Inhale, coming forward onto hands and knees. And then again, just slowly making your way nice and gentle onto your back. The other side. Switch around. Hugging that left knee in as that right leg extends out, giving that knee a gentle, gentle rock in that hip. Letting that left knee fall into that left elbow, finding some openness through the hips and extend your right arm up, finding length and openness through that right side. Letting the breath drop into your belly. And let that knee fall over to the right side, coming into the twist, settling in. And taking that bumblebee breath again, inhaling, reaching across, uniting your hands. Exhale. Taking the full length of your breath to move that arm, uniting the breath with the movement. circle, reaching your arm down across the body, up as you inhale, tracing your fingers along the floor, exhale, let yourself melt into a twist, keeping this circular flow of your energy and your breath. And last breath. Exhale your twist. And then continue to roll, keeping that twist going, bringing yourself onto your belly with your left knee out to the side and a half broad here. Getting cozy and comfy and allow yourself to just be. You don't need to do anything here other than breathe and observe. Breathing into the back of the body. Noticing any thoughts or feelings or emotions that may arise without judging them, without evaluating them. See if you can just, just watch them, just notice them. Sweeping that leg back behind you, and fully onto your belly, hands by your side, inhale, little cobra. No child's pose. Mm. 
Inhale, coming forwards and coming down. And if it's accessible for you to make your way to a wall, we're going to do legs up the wall. Such a good pose, so rejuvenating for the nervous system. Or if not, just let your legs be up in the air, or maybe resting on a couch or a bed or something. Taking a moment to set yourself up, get nice and comfy. And then resting one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Closing your eyes. Completely surrendering to gravity, keeping you firmly rooted here on this planet. And once again, scan your body. How is it feeling? How is your breath feeling? What emotions are you feeling? No judgment, just observing. And once again, affirming to yourself internally, you don't have to speak it out loud. Just let these words echo through your body, through your mind. I choose to make art through my authentic highest self. I align my mind, body, and spirit to create from the heart. Taking a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale with a sigh. <sighs> Inhaling through the nose twice more. And sigh. <sighs> Last time, really let it go. <sighs> You are safe to release, you are safe to relax, you are safe to feel. From this position, letting your knees drop down into your chest. And again, letting yourself gently rock side to side, really massaging your low back. Letting your knees and body roll to one side, coming into a little fetal position, just curling up. Take one last moment to feel your body. Release tension, 
melt towards the earth. And then gently, staying slow, staying mindful, begin to press yourself up. Taking your time, finding any movement that intuitively feels right for your body and returning to any seat that feels comfortable. Um, Staying present, staying mindful. Bring one hand to your heart and one hand to your belly. I am here and now. And from this place of grounding, I flow. Repeating to yourself, I am here and now. And from this place of grounding, I flow. Inhale your arms up overhead, gathering in all of that goodness. Uniting the palms above the head, dropping the thumbs to the third eye. May I see clearly and trust my intuition. Dropping the hands to the lips. May I speak words of kindness, kindness and truth. And finally, bringing the hands to the heart. May I act with love and compassion towards myself and others. The highest, truest, most aligned self in me recognizes and honors the truest, most aligned, highest self in you. Thank you so much for joining this evening, beautiful souls. Namaste. Mm, and shwiggle it out. Ah. <laughs> yeah, you know, let's do a little shimmy in there. <laughs> Take a moment, my loves, take a sip of water. Coming fully back to the here and now. So. This is a powerful practice. Sometimes the most powerful practices in yoga are the most um, easeful and chill ones. So treat yourself with love for the rest of your evening and the rest of your week. A practice like this can bring up a lot and energy is moving through you now, even if it doesn't feel like it all, or if you feel like, hey, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's coming out. Just trust that, that whatever is moving through you is good and that everything that you experience, any emotions or thoughts that come up in the next 48 hours, because this will continue to recalibrate your system for the next couple days, just trust the process and keep loving yourself. And when emotions arise, always just come back to your body, just return to feeling it in your body. And this is how we can recalibrate our nervous system to set the stage for more present moment awareness and knowing and flow and inspiration that is unbounded. There's no fear, there's no anxiety to trap it, to keep us blocked. So take these tools with you, the breathing, the movement, I can send you guys that EFT tapping routine. Uh, so you have that. And if you need anything at all, you guys know where to find me on Instagram. Um, currently, where I'm in the process of enrolling new students for Yoga for Dance Academy, which most of you are either, we have some alumni here. We have Mackenzie who just joined the program. Cassidy and Akila, I'm really looking forward to um, connecting with you very soon about that. So this is kind of an example 
of what the group calls in YDA can look like, that we have the workshops and we, we share, we do really powerful um, practices together to just further the experience. So if you have any questions at all too, you can, about the program, um, Georgie and Toria, do you guys feel comfortable putting your Instagrams in the chat? You guys, these two ladies are so awesome. Um, yeah, guys, go ahead and put your, your Instagram in the chat. So go follow them. Um, actually, everyone should put their thing in the chat so you guys all can follow each other. This has all been an awesome experience to have you all here. Um, and really the mission of Yoga for Dance Academy is just to unite a global community of dancers committing to raising their consciousness, healing themselves, healing their relationship with their body and making amazing art and being leaders. So all of you are leaders, all of you are amazing because you chose to be here on a Sunday night healing your nervous system. So it's pretty badass. <laughs> ah, so thank you all for being here and this, I'll upload this recording and send it to you guys or maybe I'll post it on YouTube, we'll see. But Thank you all so much for being here. I truly feel honored to practice with you and share with you tonight. Sending you all of the love. Take it, take it. Mm, mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have a beautiful night, my love. Did everyone get a chance to actually wait? I don't want to rush the Instagram. Everyone take a screenshot of the chat. <laughs> So you can find all these beautiful souls. Everyone is from all over the place. We got Cassidy in Hawaii, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Hawaii, Aquila in Brazil. We got Turia in Arizona and Mackenzie and Georgie in Utah. I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. So like, yes, worldwide community. Everyone good on the, the handles? Beautiful. All right, babes, have an amazing week. Bye. <laughs>